Hello everyone, it's me Jenny, it's time for another comment commentary. Uh, it's been a little while, no it hasn't been a little while, it's actually been an actual week since my last comment commentary, so it's going to be thankfully brief unlike last week's one, which was ridiculously long, although I am a little bit late on it, I'm still going to stick to the seven videos that were the Monday to Sunday for last week, um, and we'll go from there. So, first of all, there was my um, Skyrim thumb fun and D&D thoughts. That was just um, a Skyrim stream where I happen to spend a lot of time talking about the fact that I've just started playing D&D and it's super duper fun. Um, and KSJ Hawker um, says he was trying to imagine me with Alfie as my elf character. Um, my character in D&D is an elf character. Um, yes. Um, she doesn't look like me. She's um, very dark haired. Um, but I haven't done any character art yet. So maybe if I do I will show it to you guys. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, her name is um, Nayla. Um, but that's the name she's going under. That is not her true name. Her true name is much more difficult to pronounce, but, um, secrets. Um, moving on to the naked truth on alcohol. There was lots of very long responses on that, because it's a very complicated subject. Um, Baxorn said that he, um, drank his... He went to Mexico, and his first drink was when he was 18 and had uh, his first screwdriver. Um, and also talks about Long Island iced tea, which I had it while in America. Um, and yeah, um, he's gone through phases where he's given up alcohol and drinking too much, um, or drinking a lot during casual drinking, and right now he's kind of, um, at a standard level because of work. So yeah, I think it's a matter of finding your own limits, um, a lot of the time. For example, Nathan Lyle says that, um, he doesn't drink at all and finds it kind of uncomfortable that, um, some people find it surprising when he says he doesn't drink. Um, uh, he always finds it slightly disappointing when people can't have fun without drinking. I always do, like, in the back of my brain, like, I do understand that people do really enjoy drinking. And I, I do enjoy drinking occasionally. Um, the thing is, whenever I try and get drunk about midway through or, like, one glass in, I immediately decide that I shouldn't. And I tend to sober up. Um, I can enjoy drinking, and I do enjoy drinking. But I never need it to have fun. I can have an equal amount of fun not drinking, um, which I discovered at uni. Because the thing is, when everyone around you is drunk, they're not going to know what you're drinking. So if you say that you had a pre-drink earlier, they're not going to know. Um, and that was one of the things I did at uni. I would have soft drinks the entire way through an evening and no one would question it. Um, like, nobody needed to know how drunk I was. And so I spent a lot of e evenings at university so called sober. I did spend a couple of evenings being slightly less than sober, um, but never enough to lose time, never enough to get a hangover, um, and yeah, like, I think I only threw up once, um, and that was the house party that I discussed in that video, or the house party syndrome that I discussed in that video, that was, um, I, I bought a bottle of wine as a gift and then discovered that nobody else was bringing gifts to that party, so then I had a spare bottle of wine, and... I don't particularly like white wine, um, hence why I bought it as a gift, but it was in my hand um, and it was kind of awkward because I didn't really know anyone there, um, so I just kept sipping from the bottle. Um, that's the only time I've ever thrown up um, because of drinking, um, without other extraneous factors. Um, but I, I didn't get a hangover from that um, and I didn't lose any memory from it. I know exactly what happened and exactly who I talked to that night. Um, so, like, again, like, it's a very big issue, hence why it's such a long video, hence why everyone's given such really detailed, wonderful answers on comments for that video. Um, like, I, I do feel pity for people who can't have fun without drinking, but I also do empathise with the drinking thing. I'm never going to tell someone not to drink, I'm never going to tell someone to drink. Um, it's, you know, everyone's individual right to decide as long as it's, you know, within a legal boundary. Um, for me, it comes down to, you know, drinking sensibly, which is what... Astion says, um, Astion GMR, um, says that, um, his thoughts are being safe and careful, um, and know a sense of measure and know your own body. So, yeah, that's exactly what, um, I think kind of needs to be said. Like, everyone should be able to judge for themselves. I do pity people who can't have fun without being drunk. Like, the same way I pity people who can't have fun who can't, like, can't do, have the same level of happiness that they have when they're high or when they're on other substances, but... In the end, it's down to them and how they choose to live their life, so I can't judge. But I do think it's a matter of being safe and sensible. Um, and he started drinking when he was 14 and had an incident involving an entire bottle of vodka, which helped 
shape his understanding of alcohol. So um, I'm glad you're alive um, and that that was a learning experience. Um, Solace B um, says um, he never used to worry about drinking until he had um, a, um, a very a very funny anecdote involving aftershock cinnamon snaps um, and a girl who he tried to talk to but couldn't quite talk to. Um, you did say um, you um, you're not sure how you found your way to the car at closing time. I'm assuming that someone else was driving during that incident. I assume I assume someone else was driving. Um, but I, I'm glad that even if you guys have had negative experiences, that you've learned from them in a positive way, rather than "Hey, I lost my memory. Great, let's do this again," because that's not perhaps the most healthy mentality. Um, and KSJ said um, he was wondering if I was drunk at the beginning of that video. I was completely utterly stone cold sober but I was having a brain loopy day like my brain was just all over the place um and I think I like usually before filming an age I like center myself and then I like, like while in the shower I think through like things I want to talk about and like in the shower my brain was just in a really really scattered place and then um I got out of the shower and I just turned on my camera without like settling my brain um <laughs> so I think the first part of that video was just like a uh, which is what I do um, and he didn't have friends uh, when he was didn't have friends who were drunk when he was a teenager. Like, uh, as a teen, he didn't have a group of friends who went to parties and drank, so it was never a thing for him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to say he didn't have friends because that would be wrong. That would be very, very wrong. I'm tired. Um, uh, but he only drinks mixes and such like because they're tasty. I understand really, really disliking the taste of alcohol. It took me a long, long time to like alcohol and in many ways there are a lot of alcohols that I choose not to drink because they're just not pleasant to drink. On last week's comment commentary, which was 38 minutes long, um, thank you for your teapots. Um, uh, Baxon says my reaction at finding out the length was priceless. Thank you. Uh, Mark Amano says he was watching this at 1.30am um, and has work. So I hope you slept well last night, that night, whatever night that was, that was Mark. Um, KSJ said, how am I going to break this record? Well, I do talk a lot, like my streams are long. Um, I'm sure that I'll, I will break the record somewhere online if I um, get behind with my videos and my comment commentaries again. And, you know, I, I can talk for a long, long time continuously. Um, so I'm sure I'll break the record at some point if the challenge ever happens. Um, talk of drinking, uh, one of the things I said is if I get to a subscriber margin, or a follower margin, I think I said 100 followers or 400 subscribers, no, 500 subscribers, 500 subscribers, 500 subscribers, um, I will um, do a, a drinking game stream, which again, coming off the drinking game thing, I am very sensible when it comes to drinking, it will be sips, not shots, it will be the very, um, you know, reasonable amounts, and if I feel like I'm getting too drunk, I will switch to water. I'm not afraid to do that, um, but I will do something mildly entertaining if I get to a subscriber margin. Um, but that will probably be a long stream of some kind, and hopefully it will be entertaining, fingers crossed. Um, Nathan Lyle um, spewed a lot of the things that I talked about. So there was pizza, there was emojis, there was turtle, there was turtle pizza love, um, and Rambly Jenny is funny. So, yay! And also sung um, uh, Ramble on my <laughs> they'll be asleep when you are done which is a very good parody <laughs> um pineapple boy films i gave a huge huge shout out to um jake jarvie and the whole um pineapple boy cruise pops team last week and it is by far one of my favorite things and i'm willing to give another shout out because they're still fabulous my t-shirt arrived that i got as part of the kickstarter thing i'm slightly concerned because my main email address um, has gone out of commission, so the email address that I signed up with Kickstarter in order to get the behind the scenes video is no longer accessible, so I think I've lost all the behind the scenes stuff that I'm due to be sent. Maybe, I don't know, but um, uh, the money has gone to a good cause, so I, I don't mind too much. Also, t-shirt is awesome, I'm not wearing it right now, I'm wearing a summer dress, but um, I will wear it at some point. I think I've worn it in one of the videos, possibly one of my Naked Truths. Um, but yeah, it's really cute. Um, and yeah, he said that the Bristol meetup was one of his favourites. Um, it was my first ever YouTube um, experience going to the Bristol meet, and it was really, really fun. Um, it was the first time seeing um, people from the internet in 3D, and it was just, it was kind of weird and wonderful and amazing. I think we had, like, tacos or something. It was fun. Um, 
or tortillas, not tears, um, trying crisp things. It's been a long day, guys. Um, I think they're tortillas. No, tortillas are like. I'm not drunk, guys. <laughs> I'm just. It's, it's quarter to one in the morning. Um, I'll remember at some point. But triangle crispy. You have nachos, tacos. Nachos? Some form of Mexican food that was nice and easy to share with cheese. Um, and that was fun. Uh, I was also, I don't know whether or not I mentioned it at the time, but um, it was, um, as I said, it was my first time meeting YouTube people or people from the internet in real life and seeing people in 3D. Um, and while I was on my way to that meet, um, I, you know, started heading over about five minutes beforehand and I saw you, Jake, and Eliza, and your sister in another cafe just on the, by the riverside in Bristol. Um, as I walked past and I saw you and I was like, oh my god, they're here and there in 3D. Oh my god, oh my god. And then I carried on walking and I stood outside the cinema where we were going to meet reading my book until I saw you guys go in and that was the point where I went up the stairs and I was like, oh my god, 3D. So I kind of had like at least like 10 minutes to get over the concept that people are 3D when they're not on the internet. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like a fan freak out moment. It was just kind of the first time that I experienced that level of not knowing someone until you know them type thing. But um, yeah, I don't know why I had to put that anecdote in there, but hopefully that me didn't make you too uncomfortable or whatever. But it was just, it was, it was the first time that I saw someone who I'd only known in 2D as 3D. So, yeah. Um, moving on uh, to my jazz video. Um, jazz is my cat. He is lovely. Um, uh, Red Sky Blackbird says, more cats. I want a ruffled cat fur. So pretty. He is very pretty. He's a very, very pretty cat. Um, Solis B said, love cats. Have you seen my ex cat Chuck on Twitter? Is that I, I don't know exactly what it is. I haven't seen pictures or anything of that, but I'm guessing it's your ex's cat who was called Chuck. I'm not sure your punctuation is slightly odd. Um like your capitalization is slightly odd, so I don't know whether or not it's like is it your is your cat called X Cat? Or is your cat called Chuck? Or is it yeah, um, I haven't seen that, um, but if, if you have adorable cat pictures, feel free to um, tweet a couple at me. I would be happy with cat pictures. Um, on my other Naked Truth, because uh, I did two tr Naked Truths in one week because I was behind with them, um, there was the one on aliens. Uh, Jolly Wave said, I think, to think we're the only ones in space is absurd, the truth is out there. But well said indeed. Um, Libin said, um, he likes the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy references. I can't resist the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy references. Nathan Lyle says, um, he knows aliens exist because he's one of them. <gasps> I've given away a secret. I'm so sorry. Um, KSJ says, the pyjama truth. Um, it is true. I do them in my pyjamas just because um, I uh, watch my Naked Truth this week because it's actually on nudity and that will explain that one in a little bit more detail. Um, and says, if you could find a... Um, very much Earth-like planet or a Class M planet, I believe the um, Star Trek term. Um, the idea of finding life might be high, um, but finding an Earth-class planet maybe one in a million. Whether or not that life is the same evolutionary pressures, blah 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 blah. Basically, the likelihood of having two planets or another planet like Earth that has the same level of intelligence that is identifiable to us as an something that we can communicate with, whether or not it's above us or below us in terms of the um, intelligence spectrum. Finding a planet that's on the same level of us in that evolutionary kind of thing that we could hypothetically relate to in a realistic way um, is so, such a like infinitely improbable scale. Um, and then again, like the way that I described it, I kind of got a bit scattered on that video and trying to explain how it is so improbable that two, it's so improbable that we exist. It's twice as improbable that another planet exists. Um, it's three times as improbable that we'll reach the space transition age at the same time. And then it's infinitely more improbable, improbable that without knowing that each other exists, that we could then cross paths and actually come into contact with each other. It's like throwing, like, Two people stood over two different sides of a field, blindfolded after being spun around in a circle, trying to throw balls, and the balls hit themselves midway. Like, 
that that's how like improbable it is like if they're dizzy drunk people wearing blindfolds throwing balls at one another hoping that the balls will hit and um, for the sake of clarity i'm gonna say basketballs just so that there's no miscommunication in the chat um, but yeah that, that's kind of what i was trying to explain um in the improbability of having contact with people um Libin said he'll be running for space president 2020, um, and KSJ says as the di uh, dictator of the moon Kerberos, one of Pluto's, um, he gives his full support, which is lovely. Um, good to have people working together to um, take over the galaxy. Kudos. Um, Girl of the Books um, says the probability of, exact of the exact atoms bumping together to form a life on Earth was so incredibly small, but the chance of other life being out there is real, unending universe and all, but... I don't think we'll ever make contact to prove the existence for one way or the other. But hey, children's children's children's. I think, you know, there is infinite probability in the future, but there's so much infinite improbability that says that contact might never happen. But I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen in my generation, so I can't invest too much time in it, uh, which is ironic given how much time I've spent talking about this video and this subject. Um, has zerification, um, says the chances of anything coming to Mars are a million to one, the chances of anything coming to a million to one, but they still come. I feel like that's a quote, but I don't know what that means, I don't know what that's a quote in reference to. And last but not least, whew, um, I was hoping this would be a short video, but 16 flipping minutes, oh my god, I'm terrible at these things. Um, on my Eowyn video, Eowyn is Jazz's sister, um, uh, cat vs cat, cat fight. Um, they do cat fight, Jazz and Eowyn. Um, mostly Eowyn tends to hiss at him and Jazz tends to run away. Um, they used to get on very, very well when they were kittens, but um, once they developed into teens, um, we had to have her spayed early because um, boy and girl in the same house, regardless of the fact that they are technically related, doesn't really mess with the biology of animals. Um, so we had to have her spayed early, and then after that point, they just, they don't, hate each other but they don't tend to get on with each other very well they don't tend to spend too much time in the same room as each other unless both of them are equally um distracted by a, a caring human <laughs> um jolly wave said he kitty 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 and was that bottle of wine by the door it was a bottle of wine by the door it was finished um it was started the day before and like there was like half a glass of wine left so that was finished by other people in the house and then we tend to put our recycling by the back by the front door so that in the morning we can just lift it out and put it in the recycling bin once the door's been unlocked um, but we don't tend to do it at night because you know who wants to go out in the cold to drop off some recycling um ksj said cat week which cat would win their staring contest eowyn eowyn is the alpha in the house um jazz is the scaredy cat very literally um red sky blackbird says more cats we demand more we demand all the cats um, there is a video that I posted today, which Red Sky Blackbird will like, um, where I did a cat hunt in my village. Um, and uh, says that I seemed very tipsy in that video, I promise I only had one glass of wine that night. Um, but uh, I'm a lightweight when it comes to red wine, so one glass is more than enough to get me sufficiently tippled for the night. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'll see you guys all very soon. Um, and yeah, I've got a video that I've already uploaded that I'll be posting as soon as this one's up online. Um, and then I've, it's, I'm filming this very late um, in terms of the week process. So hopefully I will catch up um, tomorrow, which is a, a day off um, on my videos that I'm behind on. And we can go back to being on a weekly schedule. But don't hold out hopes. You're talking to me and I'm talking to you. And you guys know that I'm about as reliable in keeping schedule as a fish is to breathing on land so um thank you for watching and i'll see you soon oh feel free to comment because that's the whole point comment 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 comment